Yeah, so the, the first um, challenge for managing IoT devices at scale is the need to update devices over the air. Um, and I, I mean, there's, there's any number of reasons why that's important. Um, I, I think the first one to think about is first that to update devices, especially remote devices, can be really expensive, right? So if you've got devices that are, you know, in remote locations in the middle of oil fields or on, you know, cargo tankers in the middle of an ocean, it's really expensive to uh, send a person out uh, to do updating. So the challenge of being able to manage a device over the air is really all about uh, making sure that the, the cost to provide the service matches the value of the service or the revenue being generated by the service. Secondly, it's really important to update devices. As you were saying earlier, Will, these devices can last three, five, 10 years or longer. Long lived devices are risky if you do not update them. Um, and I think everybody knows sort of in the world that we live in today, um, you know, vulnerabilities, um, that we don't sort of recognize initially with a device can happen over time. Um, and it's really important to be able to effectively and efficiently being able to push out an update um, at scale to devices to make sure that um, all vulnerabilities are patched. And thirdly, it's important to be able to update devices uh, over the air because frankly, at some point, an enterprise or a service provider is gonna to want to add additional functionality to the device. Um, and one of the ways to make sure that you can do that in an efficient way is to push out um, a software update over the air. And just to level set, Will, it's probably helpful to say, so if you think about sort of the generalized photo process, photo being firmware over the air, right? This updating process, sort of what happens here? Well, imagine you sort of have a two parties talking to each other, one party, is the IoT platform. One party is the IoT device. What's really going on during a photo? Well, in the most simple sense, the platform pings the device and says, are you awake? Is it possible for me to do an, a push to an update to you right now? The device talks back to the platform and says, yes, uh, I have the most relevant um, firmware on the device, the most recent firmware, I'm ready to receive uh, the update. Then the platform sends the update to the device, the device um, uh, updates the firmware, and then the platform issues a reboot command and says uh, to the device, okay, reboot now, and if that's successful, the device sends a message back to the platform saying, A-okay, everything is ready to go. So Steve, what you're saying is not only for maintenance, device maintenance purposes, but also for adding new functionalities. That's great insight, Steve. Yeah, now, absolutely. Well. Now, Greg, could you take us down to the technical details as related to the photo, specifically why Omar OMA Lightweight M2M is the most suitable technology for solving this challenge? Yes, sure, Will. So at the beginning, let me make a clear division of responsibilities. First, we need to have a file. So we have a device vendor. All of, all of you have probably heard about putting backdoors, embedding credentials, or lack of firmware file signing. So let's assume that we have a file ready to be uploaded for your devices. And here, the good device management protocol, there's the picture. There are many ways of implementing firmware updates available on the market. You know, in fact, every platform or device vendor can develop a custom mechanism and claim to have photo support. However, they usually don't guarantee any interoperability of the implementation, which is why the Lightweight M2M protocol offers the leading solution in this field. And what I would like to do is to prove that performing a firmware update is a simple task, provided that you have chosen the Lightweight M2M protocol. Even if, even if a popular file transfer method is to be used, such as the well-known HTTP protocol, there, is a, there, is, there are a number of concerns which must be addressed. These issues are displayed in this slide. So let's take a closer look at messaging protocols because messaging protocols are fairly popular today, right? Um, so messaging protocols like MQTT don't provide any answer to these points, for example. 
unless device management uh, operations are defined on top of the messaging protocol, we have no clue, no idea how to transfer uh, data and operations to, to the devices. So that's it. But the Lightweight M2M protocol provides us a lot of flexibility. So let's turn on to the next slide. Yeah, so if we have a file, you can better of possibilities. You can use, for example, a dedicated Lightweight M2M server or a separate file server. So the specification allows you to, to, uh, to make a decision where to, st when, where to store a file. So this is very useful because you can make use of C CDN content deliver network integration, for example. And this is also important uh, because, because the platform can be built in a smart manner. Let's go on to the next slide, Will. Sorry yeah. about that. No problem. So. Um, Let's take a look now how a firmware file can be delivered to a device. So depending on the case, we have many, many possibilities. So a device may pull a file from the server or a Lightweight M2M server can push a file to the device. This gives us a lot of more room for improvements. For example, the Lightweight M2M specification allows us to, allow the server to, to, to make a decision when it, it is a good moment to push the firmware file. For example, uh, when connectivity conditions are bad, when received radio signal is, signal is, is, is weak, it's, not, it's perhaps not a, not a good, good idea to start a firmware download because this would resu result in huge battery drain. On the other hand, sometimes you would like to, to provide a location of a file to your device and it's important that this, the protocol specifies that the this device should start downloading the file at the next practical occasion. So what it means is that the device is not allowed to break the transmission of business crit critical data. Yeah, so... I often, Greg, I often hear from enterprises telling me that uh, they have challenges sometimes just to reach the device. So what you're saying almost, uh, there could be that uh, the transmission, the connectivity is low or having problem yeah. for them. Yeah, exactly, oh. exactly, exactly. Uh, and the next slide answer uh, your question, I believe. Oh, let's, let's go to the next slide. Yeah, so the pro protocol specifies four states. So it's very easy to retrieve uh, the information about the current device upgrade status. So you may easily match the, the reason of a failure um, or, or, or the current, current status of your devices and have insight into the entire population of, of, of your devices. So it's, it's not only um, a chance to start the firmware transmission at, at the good moment, but also you have a detailed insight. So, Apart from these four states, the Lightweight M2M protocol specifies uh, update results. So if you have an issue like out of frame uh, during the, 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 the upgrade process or, or there is <clears throat> fault related to, to inability to save a file on your flash memory, you can retrieve that information from the device or device can send a notification to the server. So you have a detailed insight into your entire population and you have a possibility to track the firmware rollout process globally. So Greg, I learned that uh, Lightweight M2M as a technology is initiated and uh, maintained by uh, Open Mobile Alliance, OMAR, uh, SpecWorks. So is the technology specifically designed for IoT services so managing IoT devices, uh, millions of, of them out there, you know, in different state, as you described the four states in terms of uh, firmware updates, the process going through. So uh, w without a lightweight M2M, how are companies are doing? And uh, are you saying the, the old way of doing things or traditional way of doing things are more error prone? More failure? Yeah, the question is what are what traditional traditional methods are methods are yeah because they are not defined. 
So if you use a custom implementation of the upgrade process, then probably you're you're able to to upgrade one device, uh, but you lose, for example, inter interoperability. You you cannot be sure that your device will be handled well in a, another platform. And so so you you end up in vendor locking basically. Um, yeah. So let's move on to the next slide and let's let's summarize. So. As you can see, we have a well-defined firmware update state machine. We have four states um, delivered by the devices. And moreover, we have a lightweight end to end update object definition. So information about the firmware update status is, is uh, consistent among your population of devices. And moreover, lightweight end to end solves issues not addressed by messaging protocols because there are plethora of, of, of things that can not be defined, uh, like how device um, sends information about this, the, the success, how to how to notify about the success, right? Um, and uh, there are many also there are also many f file transfer protocols. So there need there, the, there is a need to introduce some some kind of protocol negotiation between a platform and the device. And this is something which is also addressed by the by the standard. So a device can uh, present what protocols are supported and a good lightweight M2M uh, device management platform can pick one of those protocols. Yeah. All right, I want to, Greg, I want to pick your brain here on, on this uh, webinar. You know, on your second bullet point, you mentioned uh, uh, lightweight M2M is, uh, you know, uh, addressing problems not currently addressed by other messaging protocols. But can they coexist? Yeah, sure. There is no issue. Uh, you can use both protocols. You can implement device having bo both technology stacks. Uh, but it's important that uh, that messaging protocols don't uh, address um, any device management operations. There are no no, no def defined operations and 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 data formats to be exchanged back and forth from devices. Uh, so. Whatever you implement is, is is probably relevant to the specific platform. Um, the device management protocol specifies not only FOTA, FOTA, FOTA process, right, but but also configuration changes, uh, telemetry data handling because you can also trans transport telemetry data using cloud with M2M using uh, observe mechanism on the co-op layer. Co-op stands for co constraint application protocol, which which is an underlying uh, protocol of light with M2M. Um, so there is a whole bunch of features delivered by Lightweight M2M, which are not even addressed by messaging protocols. Messaging protocols like AMQP or MQTT deliver only a way to exchange data between uh, nodes. So that's it. Greg, um, uh, you, you brought up a good point when you mentioned the co-op constrained uh, you know, application protocol. So as a matter of fact, what I heard is that uh, Lightweight M2M, the technology stack, is that it sits on top of co-app. Can you expand on that a little bit? Yes, constraint application protocol is a binary uh, protocol. So what it means is that that you can uh, you, you, you can transfer uh, very efficient, efficient, efficiently uh, messages between uh, devices and servers. Um, but one of the examples that that uh, that that describes benefits of, of using co-op is um, that co-op supports using very small messages. Um, so in, in, in constraint networks like narrowband IoT networks, where when you have very, very low MTU, MTU is, is maximum transmission unit, um, then you can have huge benefits from using co-op because um, usually data ground trans tra transport protocols uh, does not support uh, segmentation and resequencing. So if you transfer a large file um, o o o over over uh, data ground transport uh, protocols, then you have file size limit because device constrained device is not able to to reorder and 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 merge all the pieces together. So uh, in case of transferring bigger files, like firmware files, it's important to allow devices to, um, to, 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 to collect the file without any issues. So there is a feature called, um, called um, blockwise transfer on the co-op layer, which solves this issue. 
So basically, it's possible to transfer a file in blocks which are adjusted and 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 um, meet MTU size. So you don't have huge fragmentation here, and the, 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 this is one of the advantages of the lightweight M2M -M protocol as well. Excellent. That seems to be the lightweight M2M -M offers the easiest way to do just that for file transferring at the minimum. All right, let's go to the next slide. And uh, sum this up for, for us, uh, Greg. Okay, so long story short, you can have um, any solution, but um, as soon as you have thousands of devices, real issues can be revealed. So um, if you have a very simple solution that will work for, for, for a few devices, but as soon as you reach um, a, a huge amount of devices, millions of devices, uh, there is a chance that you need to have a very detailed insight into the, the entire population, into the entire fleet. So this is where Lightweight M2M allows you to have full control over all your devices in the field. Right. the the key The, the key thing, the fundamental uh, challenge is the, you know, the the number of devices out there, the sensors and controllers, and what you want to do with that device. Right. The telemetry data needs to report it. Need to be uh, helping aiding business decisions at the end of the day, tracking, but also for decision making. That's uh, that's really insightful. 